Willis, when, how did you know to come into the courtroom right then? Because there was people I was pacing in my office. Okay. And um, I heard someone yell, his testimony is done. Um, it only made sense to me that I would be your next witness. And I've been very anxious to have this conversation with you today. Okay. So I ran to the courtroom. So as soon as um, you heard that Mr. Wade was done testifying, that's when you just assumed you would be the next witness? It only makes sense. Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? And in my office pacing, ma'am. <laughs> Last month, Georgia Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee ruled that Willis could stay on the case only if Nathan Wade, the lead prosecutor she appointed and with whom she had an affair, left the case. Wade resigned shortly after the ruling, but Dershowitz on Tuesday said the evidence is overwhelming that she had gotten paid. Essentially, she got kickbacks for appointing this highly unqualified person to head the prosecution, said Dershowitz. I sure hope the appellate court takes the case and throws her out of the case and recommends that there be a criminal investigation. We have to have an independent prosecutor of some kind looking into what is an open and shut case of perjury. Um, did you listen to any arguments? I did hear the, the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um, um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday. And um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued. But since it did, here I am. Great. Um, so let's talk about, first let's just talk about what you did in preparation for today. Um, did you meet with Mr. Wade at all? Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you? As your honor already knew from when you were a prosecutor, prosecutors are held to a higher standard. They're the ones that are supposed to be seeking justice. They don't have a particular, they're supposed to be disinterested. When you have the lead prosecutor and the DA giving what I suggest to you is uh, untruthful testimony based on what Yerti has said, based on what Bradley said in his text, based on the whole way it was presented to you. Bradley didn't want to testify. He first came up with his attorney-client privilege thing on that. On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you could say talked about um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. Me, not so much. Okay, but my question was, did you have a conversation with him? I didn't him? have a substantive conversation. You did not? I read this motion, skimmed it, more or so, and um, I've probably said some choice things to him about of the lies they were told okay the state has not challenged those there are two occasions where the records reflect that it appears mr wade spent the night at that apartment <coughs> the state may say we don't accept that but they didn't challenge it and even when they brought forth what they brought forth today supplemental two and three they didn't challenge it again so what does that suggest that's corroborating evidence of what Yerte had said, of what Bradley said in his text message. It's also uh, impeachment evidence as to what Wade and Willis said about how many times. Is that a significant, in terms of just the, the times? Didn't Mr. Wade testify that he was there at least 10 times during that time frame? You've it's, now found 35. Well, Fulton County judge on Wednesday tossed out several counts brought against former President Donald Trump and five others in the case involving an alleged attempt to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in Georgia. The brief order from Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee states that six of the counts in the 41-count indictment returned by a Fulton County grand jury in August must be quashed. What I'm suggesting is if all of the overt acts are nothing more than core political speech or expressive conduct and nothing else is alleged which is not protected by the First Amendment, then you have an insufficient basis for which he has been indicted because he's being indicted for First Amendment uh, speech and not for unprotected speech. And therefore, the statement that was made about if it were true, we could still 
use it as an overt act, suggests that they can prosecute true speech, which is what we're trying to get to here. It's the nature of the speech, the political speech, the heightened value of such, which gets this situation different than others, and the fact that it comes from then President of the United States. Going back to what was said in addition by the state, what the state claims is criminal here is lying to the government. That's what it said. That's the exact reason why in several of the Supreme Court cases it's been found to be protected speech, because it deals with the government and falsity in the sense of communication with or to the government is best dealt with through true speech, not through prosecutions, because prosecutions chill speech. And when it comes to political core speech, what you don't want is chilled.